A beautiful rose is delicate and soft. Add in candlelight and they become romantic. Many years ago, ladies adorned themselves with gloves, beautiful jewels, and beautiful accessories. Many poets and lyricists compared the beauty and grace of a woman to that of a rose, soft and perfect. Lace and accessories disguised how women really felt. Hiding behind their beauty, ladies were not light, they were dark. Hearts were aching. Who were they? Welcome to Simply Belletza. Let's explore their darkened beauty, the facade of a gothic Victorian rose. My natural brows have a high arch. I use the glue stick method to cover them up for later, making sure to blend it in a very light layer. The beauty of a rose can be attributed to its lack of imperfection. Applying primer will fill in fine lines and pores, thus creating an illusion of perfect skin. Blend it in where any skin folds or creases. Ladies from the Victorian era rarely went outdoors without covering up. They were often very pale. This also came from being malnourished during depressing times. I blended a white foundation with my own foundation to pale out my skin, blending it well. Powdering her face sealed imperfections away and has long since been used vicariously. Today, we tap it on to seal in creamy foundations so they do not move. Using a light purple tone color to contour the hollows of the face, I create contours of bone structure and highlight the shadows in which women lived. Eyes are said to be the entryway to the soul. When the soul is sad, the eyes express that. I create deepened sad eyes using a matte plum shadow across the lid and in the hollows. Using white, I blend it out so that it shows softer depths. With a bluer tone, the areas around the eyes are deepened, depicting years without the direct warmth of the sun. Smudging black against the lash line emphasizes the darkness of the eyes. It also helps to disguise the bands of false lashes. Blend it for shadowing effects. Since the foundation didn't fully cover my brows, I'm sealing it in with a powder foundation, pushing it into the cream to lock in the color and my hairs. A lower set brow without much of an arch is a softer look that many women had in times long past. 
It looks more innocent and deepens the effect of the eyes. I use this tan to blend out the shadows of the purple more inward, allowing for fuller dimensions. Having rosy cheeks is a sign of good health. Pale ladies feign the rosiness by pinching their cheeks, or by applying rouge. We'll use a deep pink blush instead. During evening excursions, showing flirtatious features that could symbolize joy and innocence helped to disguise the boredom and misery. By applying mascara and false lashes, we can replicate the fluttery look too. For mystery and intrigue, rouge was added to the lips. Having a rounder lip shape helped to attract attention and add a youthful appearance. But for the real woman inside, a darker color would show exoticism, a trait that women of the time could easily show with wit, intellect, and curt words. A real faux pas in deviant behavior. And this, this is her face. I put on a long black wig. I pinned it up in a loose bun and I allowed curls and shorter hairs to drape down around my face. I found this hairpiece with lace and feathers to complete this costume look. One final step, contouring the shape of a smaller nose, smaller and more feminine, pointed and keeping the eyes more focused. Adorn yourself with gloves, jewels, and accessories to embody the gothic Victorian rose. Just remember who she is behind the facade. Honor her by being your own beautiful self and letting the light in. Stay electric, my loves. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.